In this video, we'll look at multi-step methods for ordinary differential equation solvers. After studying this video, you should be able to explain how multi-step ODE solver algorithms are developed, analyze the error behavior of some multi-step methods, and implement the Adams-Bashforth and Adams-Bashforth-Moulton methods in MATLAB. Recall a one-step method, like the Runge-Kutta methods we've been looking at, has the form yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus phi times h, where phi is the increment function, and it may involve function evaluations at intermediate points between i and i plus 1. Multi-step methods realize that once the integration of the ODE has started, we have information about previous time steps that we could possibly use to improve the prediction of yi plus 1. So for example, looking here, we have a numerical solution with blue points here over an exact solution. And if we want to find a slope to predict this value here, which would be our y i plus 1, Runge-Kutta methods are going to use everything in between i and i plus 1 to make that prediction. And that's what makes them a one-step method. A multi-step method is going to recognize that, well, we could look back and say, well, if we know i minus 2, for example, we know the slope here, and we know the slope at i minus 1, and we can calculate the slope at i, and can we use this information from all three of these points to improve our prediction of i plus 1? In other words, using some information about how has the slope of the solution been changing for the last couple time steps to help predict the next step. And we'll look at the Adams method approaches for doing this. So Adams methods start by using an alternative to the Taylor series as a starting point for deriving an ODE solver. So recall for our general initial value problem, we have dy dt is some function f of t and y. Instead of expanding that out f of t and y as a, a Taylor series, we can just look at solving for y i plus 1 by separating variables. So we would have dy is equal to f of t and y dt, and then integrating both sides for a time step. So this goes from y i to y i plus 1 and t i to t i plus 1, solving for y i plus 1 would give us this result, and this would be an exact solution. Now, obviously, if this differential equation function, f of t and y, could be integrated analytically, and we could actually calculate this integral here, we wouldn't need a numerical solution. So we can develop a numerical method by integrating that numerically. And if you recall from our discussion of numerical integration, if we take a newton coates approach to integrating that numerically, what we will do is we will replace our ODE function f of ty with an interpolating polynomial that we fit through previous points, the current ith point and previous points in the solution. And that way we can capture that information from previous steps in the integration. The order of the method we develop is going to be determined by how many points we use. Recall that one point would be a zeroth order polynomial. Two points would be a line, and so on. So let's look at a uh, let's look at 
some examples and see how those are related. So here's some approaches to developing Adam's method. And it all depends on which points we use. So if we just use past and present points, so only using past and present points, so for example ti, ti minus 1, ti minus 2, we'll call that an Adams Bashforth method, at the Adams Bashforth approach. If we use present and future points, so like ti, ti plus 1, that would be an Adams Moulton method, and using past, present, and future points, basically combining these two approaches, would be an Adams Bashforth method. Molten method. So let's look at some example Adams Bashforth methods first to get a handle on how the number of points we use for the interpolating polynomial relates to the order of the method and also to determine what do these integration schemes look like. So for Adams Bashforth with a zeroth order polynomial, we're just going to replace that derivative function with a zeroth order polynomial which is a constant which the obvious choice here to use would be its value at the ith point so f of ti and yi so what we get here when we plug that in we get yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus the integral from ti to ti plus 1 of f at ti and yi dt. Now this is going to be a constant over that integration range so when we integrate that we just get yi plus 1 is equal to yi times or sorry plus f at ti yi times ti plus 1 minus ti. Recall that's just equal to h. And this should look pretty familiar because if you look closely here, we've got yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus f of ti yi times h. And this is actually just Euler's method. So as far as the trocation error, we know it's going to be the same as Euler's method or a local second order accurate and global first order accurate method. Now obviously we've not done anything new here but it is nice that we end up with a similar method that we've already looked at in the simplest case which the simplest case of our multi-step method which actually is still a one-step method because we're only using the ith time step is the same as our simplest one-step method. Let's look what happens when we go to a higher order and use a first order polynomial. So for the first order polynomial we will replace our slope f of ty with a first order interpolating polynomial so that would be a line and here's the equation of a line using the slope calculated from points i and i minus 1 to form that linear interpolation. So we'll plug that into the integral and we get yi plus 1 well let's just do the integral itself we get the integral from ti to ti plus 1 of fi plus and notice a little shorthand here so fi is this is just shorthand for our function our ODE function f evaluated at ti and yi and so fi minus 1 would be f evaluated at ti minus 1 and yi minus 1. I'm just using that shorthand so this doesn't get so messy carrying around those parentheses. So we have fi plus fi minus fi minus 1 over h times t minus ti dt integrating we get fi plugging in the limits ti plus 1 minus ti plus 
fi minus fi minus 1 over h times t minus ti squared over 2 and if we plug in the lower limit here we're going to get 0 ti minus ti so plugging in the limits here we just have a ti plus 1 minus ti and then next thing we can do is recognize it again this is h and this would be h so we'd have an h squared which cancels out that h and simplifying this and plugging in for yi plus 1 we get yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus and we're going to have we'll bring out the h over 2 and then bringing out the h over 2 we're going to have 1 fi when I factor out the 1 half this becomes 2 fi plus a third fi so we get 3 fi minus fi minus 1 and that is our second order Adams bash fourth. Now, as far as the truncation error for the second order Adams bash fourth, what we'll do is we'll recognize it. Now we're approximating our derivative function, our ODE function, f of ti, as a line between the two points. So, since we're approximating it as a line and integrating that the truncation error we can get by just recognizing this is analogous again to the trapezoid rule in terms of how we're integrating this and so we'll say this is globally trapezoid rule recall is locally order h cubed globally order h squared So we could keep doing this and develop higher order Adams Bashford methods. Again, they'd be developed with a similar approach, just more algebra. So there's no need to go through the algebra if you get the general concept. So here's a fourth order Adams Bashford scheme that we would get using a cubic polynomial. So again, we see if we're using a third order polynomial or a cubic we get a fourth order accurate ODE solver so again we have a linear combination now since it's a cubic we need four points so we bring in f i minus one i minus two and i minus three so one thing that you'll notice is that this is really kind of a similar approach to fourth order Runga Kutta, and so let's compare the two approaches. So fourth order Adams Bash fourth, we have a linear combination again of function evaluations. Where those function evaluations again remember our our ODE function, dy dt is f of ty. The difference here is for Adams Bash fourth, our function evaluations are for the current point i and previous points i minus one, i minus two i minus 3. So we're using those previous points along the integration. Second, fourth order Runge-Kutta is going to give us a linear combination of four k values and remember all those k values are also function evaluations. But these are function evaluations at estimated points between step i and step i plus 1 because remember this is a one step method so we're not using any of those previous points for fourth order runge kutta now they're both fourth order methods it's we're not going to say that one is necessarily better than the other it's just that these give us two alternative approaches and depending on the differential equation we're trying to solve one might work better versus the other. And we'll talk more about pairing up a solver to an actual differential equation as we move forward. So let's look at how we would implement Adams Bashforth. Now one complication here when we want to implement Adams Bashforth is the use of these previous points. So 
Consider the second order Adams Bashforth method. So we're implementing it to a differential equation in the form dy dt is equal to f of ty. And we have just one initial condition, y at some t naught is equal to y naught. So for our first step in the integration, we don't have any information here of the i minus 1 step, because the i minus 1 step doesn't exist when i equals uh, 1. Sorry, i would equal 0, which would mean we would be using our initial condition for the f of f sub i, and we just don't have that. So for that, for those previous points, we need to calculate the first time step or the first few time steps with a one-step method. So if, if we're doing a second-order Adams Bashforth scheme, it would make sense to use a second order runge kutta scheme for one step. And then once we get to i equals 3, then we'll have i equals 2 and i equals 1 to calculate the third step. For a fourth order Adams Bashforth, we would use a fourth order runge kutta. So we get i equals 1, 2, and 3 with runge kutta. And then we can calculate y i plus 1, where that i is 3. So calculate y 4 with Adams Bashforth, fourth order. So here's some example MATLAB code to do that for the second order Adams Bashforth method. We can still use that basic structure we've been using for the one step initial value problem solvers. So again, here we set this up for a system of equations with y values as columns in a matrix. But again, we need to solve that for that first time step with a one-step solver, since this is second order Adams Bashforth. So in this example, I've done that with Hune's method. So right here, we're just going to use Hune for one step. And then we'll start the Adams Bashforth integration with i equals 2. And so with i equals 2, we we'll calculate dy dt for, this is just short for i minus 1. So that's going to be dy dt evaluated at ti minus 1 and yi minus 1. And then we'll also calculate dy dt for the ith time step. And then use the Adams Bashforth. Bash fourth integration scheme again here we have 3fi minus fi minus 1 all times h over 2 to predict that next time step. So another approach I mentioned was the Adams Moulton approach. For the Adams Moulton approach we're going to look forward to the i plus 1 time step. So here we'll look at a second order Adams Moulton and the main difference to using that first order polynomial to approximate the derivative behavior f of ty between i and i plus 1 is that we're going to use the i plus 1 function evaluation and fi to get that slope. So a little bit different from Adams Bashforth, we call a b we had fi minus fi minus 1 in the numerator for the slope of our interpolating polynomial. When we integrate that and plug in the limits, we get the following approximation for yi plus 1. So we have yi plus h over 2 times f at ti plus 1 and yi plus 1 plus f at ti and yi. And maybe this looks familiar because this is the same as Hune's method. And similar to Hune's method, we either need a predictor to get yi plus 1, or we can also use this for an implicit method, since yi plus 1 is on both sides of the equal sign. And we'll talk more about implicit methods in a future video, but the 
main thing about implicit methods is they're very difficult to implement. So for now, we can imagine just using the i plus 1 predictor, and we'll look at that in a, in a minute. The, uh, meth the Adams multi method doesn't look like Hune's method anymore if we go to a higher order. For example, here's a fourth order Adams Moulton scheme. Again, it's a linear combination of function evaluations. Still, only looking forward to the i plus 1 step. But recall for a fourth order scheme, that means we would be using a cubic polynomial for the integration to develop the method. And so we're going to need four points. So we have i plus 1, fi, fi minus 1, and fi minus 2. This again is an implicit method that's very difficult to implement, or we can use a predictor corrector approach. So looking at that predictor corrector approach, typically since we're using an Adams method, we'll use an Adams method for the predictor as well. So this would be a second order second order Adams Bashford Moulton because what we'll do is use an Adams Bashforth second order Adams Bashforth for the predictor equation and then use a second order Adams Moulton which is the same as Hune's method for the corrector equation and just like with Hune's method we can do this with a corrector iteration where we continually update keep updating that corrected value of i plus 1 with our improved new and improved value of i plus 1 and iterate until that approximate relative error is less than our stopping criteria or that approximate relative error is the error between our new corrected value and our previous corrected value. And that concludes this video.